Hey, what is up, everybody? It's Animac here for Anime Uproar. And since Dragon Maid is such a cultured and sophisticated anime, I decided to take on a sophisticated English accent for this video. Okay, not really. It's 414 Anime here. Hi. And today I will be explaining all the main series dragons from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Now, just like my boy Axel, I am also a part of Team Uproar as one of their editors. And after a little banter at my expense for liking Dragon Maid, a little too much. Uh, the, the lads asked me to make a video on it. So goes without saying, not only as part of the team, but also a longtime fan of the channel, let's just say I am a little psyched for this. Now, I will be putting some bite-sized information together on each of the main dragons, looking into who they are, why they came to the human world, a bit on their backstories, their powers, etc. It's, it's going to be amazing. Now, one of my most favorite things about this series, and why I personally think it resonates with so many different people, is its vast collection of very colorful characters, each with their own unique personalities that blend together very well with one another. Everyone seems to have a favorite, you know, so let us know who yours is in the comment section below, and if you stick around till the very end of this video, I'll let you know who mine is. Now, if you do enjoy this Dragon Maid video, you know what to do. Channel the dragon within and obliterate that like button. If you haven't already, make this the video that you subscribe and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications. You can also follow Anime Uproar on Twitter and Instagram at Anime Uproar. And if you really want to, feel free to follow me as well at 414anime underscore. Thank you. Of course, this video will contain Dragon Maid manga spoilers. So please proceed with caution. You have been warned. Okay, let's kick this video off with our main girl, Toru. Toru is a very outgoing dragon with a happy and caring nature. Toru is incredibly cheerful and kind to every human that she meets. Now, Toru's kind and caring nature can take a complete 180 when she feels people are a threat to Kobayashi. Well, a threat to Toru and a potential love interest to Kobayashi anyway. So Toru is the main dragon of the series and a part of the Chaos faction. The dragons in the series are each split into one of three different factions. There is the Chaos faction who look to destroy humans as well as their civilizations and even their gods. Then there's the Harmony faction, whose goal it is to make the world a place where the humans and dragons can live peacefully side by side. And then finally, there is the Spectating faction, who, as the name suggests, are on neither side and choose not to get involved with said matters. Our girl Toru is the daughter of Democles, the Emperor of Demise, and was brought up to hate all humans. She was taught that all humans were evil, inferior, and above all, foolish creatures. Now, one fateful day, Toru was wounded in battle by a god leading a human army against her, and on the verge of death, Toru was forced to retreat to the human world. It was here that Toru met a drunk human woman who changed her entire perception on the humans, as she not only helped to remove the holy sword from Toru's body, but the woman also accepted her, even in her dragon form. The two forged a close bond that night, and with nowhere to call home in the human world, the human, Kobayashi, offered the dragon a place to stay. Taking Kobayashi up on her offer and after learning that she had a very strong love for maids, Toru paid her a visit at her apartment to begin her life as Kobayashi's maid. Now, on her flight to Kobayashi's apartment, Toru flew over a maid cafe called Maid Cafe Cozy and decided to transform her scales in human form to match the same attire these maids were wearing. Not knowing that this was more cosplay than the traditional maid attire, Kobayashi often likes to point out her faults with it. So, in her human form, Toru looks to be of average height. She is described as having a full figure with large breasts and thick thighs. Now, the opai, as we know from Toru herself, are a D cup because D is for dragon. It's still one of my most favorite moments in the series. Now, in dragon form, Toru is your more traditional dragon, let's say. She is a huge green European dragon with a lighter green belly, black wings, and piercing yellow eyes. In terms of power, Toru is one of the more powerful dragons in the series. Toru controls the element of fire with expertise and has mastered it so that it can be used in many different ways. As such, her flames come in a variety of sizes. She has a large, powerful blast of fire, an incinerating beam, and can also produce small bursts of fire that can still cause a fair amount of destruction. Now, as a dragon, she is of course capable of flight as well as possessing sharp teeth and claws. Not only this, but she has insane strength and super speed. 
And it's not all physical strength and power, as she also possesses some psychic-like abilities, such as clairvoyance. Using this ability, Toru can see through objects. She also has perception blocking, which allows her to become invisible to others. On top of that, Toru also has a super rare skill called Portal Opening. Using this, Toru can open portals to other worlds and dimensions. Now, the fateful encounter with Kobayashi the night that they met caused Toru to fall deeply in love with her, and let's just say that our dragon girl is certainly not afraid of showing her that. Toru has made many advances on Kobayashi, both verbally and through her actions, with the most entertaining of the bunch being Toru trying to find a way to get Kobayashi to eat her tail meat. Now, I absolutely love the relationship build between these two. It balances out the show's lighthearted humor with some pretty deep emotional connection between two people, or as a person and a dragon in this case, but whatever. It's, it's a story of connection and how introducing a new person into your life can completely change it. This story just warms my heart, you know, and I'll always be rooting for these two. Next up is none other than the kawaii lolly dragon, Kana. Kana is quiet and soft-spoken, and she often conveys her own emotions through very small yet very cute expressions. One of my most favorite Kana traits is uh, her curious and observant nature. The best way this is visually represented is how we see Kana's habit of eating bugs and small animals. It's uh, cute. Now, despite Kana's age over the humans, which she is said to be around 7,000 years old, she definitely has childlike characteristics, such as, you know, she gets bored of routines easily. She loves to play and, of course, likes pulling pranks and getting into mischief. Kana is the youngest of the dragons and came to the human world because she was exiled from the dragon world due to the previously mentioned mischief. Poor Kana was simply trying to get the attention of her parents by playing some pranks, but ultimately, as punishment for said pranks in the dragon world, she ended up being temporarily exiled to the human world so she could reflect on her actions. Poor, poor Kana. Now, being a young dragon, Kana is the only dragon in the main cast that is not a part of the three dragon factions. Kana's human form has the appearance of a young girl, and when she joins school, she is in the third grade. She is described as very cute, and while I totally agree with this there must be no looting of the lolly dragon i'm watching you comment section now as for her dragon form we don't know exactly what type of dragon she is but kana is a white feathered dragon with blue eyes a blue eyes white lolly dragon if you will moving on to powers kana's element is that of lightning she generates thunder that she can then manipulate into some pretty powerful attacks of course the most noticeable attack was in her spa with toru where she unleashed that lethal lolly dragon Kamehameha. Kana, again, is the youngest of the dragons, meaning she is unfortunately the weakest of them too, as she can't perform some of the skills, such as perception blocking, that the grown-up dragons can. Another example, unlike in the dragon world, the nature of the human world makes it hard for younger dragons such as Kana to draw upon it its natural mana, so she has to absorb it from her surroundings instead. The visual reference for this was when we saw her plugging her tail into the power socket in Kobayashi's apartment. Moving on to the fan service of the series, Lukua. Like, legit, Lukua was actually designed as the main fan service in mind for the series. Lukua has a very carefree, laid back nature. She is full of wisdom, with the other characters often seeking out advice from her. What she lacks, however, seems to be modesty. She is extremely flirtatious and certainly not afraid to wear the most skimpy of outfits. Her personality is best referenced in her interactions with Shota. She teases him and puts him in the most awkward situations a boy his age could be in. So much so that Shota actually sees her as more of a demon or a succubus than that of a dragon. In her human form, Lukua has a noise hourglass figure with very large opai. Opai aside, her most standout feature for me is her eyes. She has heterochromia, which is a difference in color between the iris in both eyes. And as a visual reference, I may as well add my own best girl, Kurumi Tokosaki, into the video. I mean, I could have easily added Shoto Todoroki as a visual reference, as I know a lot of you love the uproar My Hero Academia content here, but I'm a proud degenerate, and for the minority of you that know me, you'll understand. Anyway, as for her dragon form, Lukua refers to herself as a feathered serpent. She is also one of the largest dragons. Moving on to powers and abilities, Lukua is actually the strongest dragon in the show. 
Not only that, but she is also a former deity. So I said a former deity, a former goddess. Now, the interesting thing about Lukua's backstory is that she is actually based on Aztec mythology. Lukua's name is Quetzalcoatl. The god that she is based on shares the same name. Now, as the tale goes, she was given cursed liquor by one of her friends. Lukua became drunk after consuming it and was then involved in an affair with her sister, described only as scandalous. Because of this incident, Lukua was then stripped of her title and exiled. Though even without her deity powers, Lukua is still incredibly powerful. So powerful, in fact, that her powers are said to be far beyond Toru's and even that of Fafnir's. Despite having all of this power, Lukua actually hates conflict and will turn her back on battle, even if it means leaving people in need of help behind. Knowing this, it is no surprise that Lukua is a part of the spectating faction. Next up, we are moving on to Toru's old travel buddy and now rival, Elma. Elma came to the human world with one goal in mind, to bring the dragons back. Particularly, she wants to bring back Toru, even if that meant dragging her back by force. However, despite Elma's very stubborn and persistent nature, this didn't go to plan and you know, a part of this is down to her very obvious weakness food. Her love for food is actually borderline addiction, as Elma has often run out of money because she just can't help herself due to another weakness of hers, which is indecisiveness. So this gluttony of hers is without question her greatest downfall, as our girl Elma can be so easily swayed into doing anything when presented with food as a prize. Now, in her human form, Elma has again a very noise figure, and I know she is very popular with the fanbase. But not only that, it was stated in one of the spin-off manga series following Elma's daily life entitled Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, Elma's Office Lady Diary, that Elma is incredibly desirable, enough so that it's said she is that attractive that she can make other women doubt their own sexuality. And I don't know how that feels personally, but I, I bet it's nice. Elma fits into the human world nicely as she works at the same company as Kobayashi. And a fun fact for you, but Elma is the only main dragon in the series that lives on her own, whereas the other dragons live with a human. As for her dragon form, Elma is a blue sea serpent. She is a very long water dragon with a brown horn on her forehead, and the trident that she carries around in her human form is her tail in her dragon form. Elma is a very powerful dragon who is on par with Toru. Being a water dragon, her power is based on that water element, and this means that Elma is very mobile when in water. Elma is also a part of the Harmony faction. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, it is her job to protect the humans so they can live in peace with the dragons. Now, being part of the Harmony faction, Elma has a lot of support magic behind her, as seen when she erected a huge barrier to protect the city in Toru's fight against Alulu. One of the things I love about Elma is her relationship with Toru. In the past, though the two were from different factions, they put that aside to travel the human world together. However, the truce didn't last for long as Toru found out that the humans started to worship Elma as a goddess. In Toru's eyes, Elma was taking advantage of her position and she retaliated by completely destroying a palace that the humans had built for Elma. This led to a huge, devastating fight between the two dragons, which ultimately resulted in Elma retreating. The two became rivals after this, and we have seen some hilarious exchanges between them since then. Moving on to an absolute legend, and one that on many occasions I have referred to as the true MVP of Dragon Maid. That is none other than Fafnir. Fafnir is almost your most stereotypical dragon in the sense that his life prior to coming the human world was spent in a cave protecting his treasure from the humans. Though, what is interesting about him is that it is suggested that he was actually once fully human and later gained the ability to transform into a dragon. Fafnir, another Chaos Faction dragon, is a solitary figure that is shrouded in mystery and upon coming to the human world, he definitely didn't shy away from showcasing his hatred for the humans. It wasn't until he met Takia who introduced him to video games and the otaku culture, which our boy Fafnir became extremely addicted to, by the way, that he learned to tolerate humans. Well, 
to a certain extent for him anyway. Fafnir does have a somewhat calm and collected demeanor about him, but for me, I think his character is extremely relatable. He is able to convey a mood, to display his emotions all without speaking. This Chad just always seems to be unimpressed by everything and everyone around him. So, in his human form, Fafnir is described as a handsome young man. He definitely has a somewhat Sebastian Michaelis vibe about him in his butler suit. As for his dragon form, Fafnir is a huge black dragon standing at 20 meters tall. He's also pretty scary as he has multiple pairs of deep red eyes. Fafnir also has another form. Not only that, but he is the only dragon in the series to have more than one form. This other form of his is a humanoid one. This thing is monstrous in appearance with a huge muscular build, purple skin, two horns, the same deep red eyes, and his mouth has many big sharp fangs. Power-wise, Fafnir is one of the most powerful dragons in the series. Toru, a pretty powerful Chaos Faction dragon herself, has said that she is yet to beat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. In fact, the only other main dragon in the series capable of beating him is Luqua. And like I said earlier, Fafnir is a dragon shrouded in mystery, and his powers are no exception. We do know that one of Fafnir's main powers is creating potent curses. The incantations for the curses he makes are so powerful that when written down, even a human without magic powers of their own can perform these curses. And he actually wrote a book with all these curses in them and tried to sell them at comic -Ed. Luckily, not a single person bought a copy, which, you know, it did damage Fafnir's pride, but it's, it's probably a good thing. Finally, we have the newest dragon introduced to the anime and one that came with a fair bit of controversy. The huge booba dragon, Ilulu. Ilulu came to the human world to battle Toru. Ilulu had found out that she was coexisting in the human world with a human and decided to target her, but ends up becoming Kobayashi's third dragon resident. Now, I mentioned the word controversy earlier, and this is all down to Ilulu's human appearance. In her human form, Ilulu is short in height and looks fairly young. And I guess you could argue that her main feature is her enormous boobers. I, I, I know that caused quite a stir when the anime only found out about her, but they serve a purpose. They serve a purpose, and uh, we'll touch on that a bit later. Also, interestingly, Ilulu is currently the only dragon in the main cast who is yet to have her dragon form revealed. So, Ilulu has a sad backstory and had been brainwashed by the other dragons, which led to her becoming a Chaos Faction dragon herself. Ilulu actually grew up playing with humans and was on very good terms with them. One of the human children actually made a doll for her, but Ilulu's parents strongly disliked her interacting with them and destroyed the doll. Unfortunately, it gets worse as both of her parents were eventually killed by humans. Now, she felt as if the humans hadn't done anything wrong, as it wasn't all humans humans who were responsible, but she did stop playing with those human children. The other dragons around her then groomed Ilulu into hating the humans and planted the idea in her mind that the humans and dragons could not coexist. Upon coming to the human world, Ilulu's mind was changed when she met and spoke to Kobayashi. Her early days in the series follow her adjusting to the human world and working out what she wants to do with herself now she is here. Power-wise, Ilulu shares the same main fire element as Toru, and going back to the booba and how I said that they did serve a purpose, they do, I promise, Ilulu has stated that the reason that hers are so big is because they are where she stores her fire for her attacks. Ilulu is also similar to Kana in the fact that she can't generate her own mana in the human world and must absorb it from her surroundings. In Ilulu's case, she generates mana by eating fire. And that is it. Every main dragon from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid explained. Make sure to let us know in the comment section below who your favorite dragon is. As promised, I shall reveal mine. Now, I'm a huge fan of Fafnir's vibe and I really enjoy Kana's screen time, but for me, Toru has to be my favorite. Boring answer, I know. But if I need to watch a series to get those feel-good vibes, I'll always go to this show because Toru just makes me smile, man. She does. Now, this video was a lot of fun to make and it was an absolute pleasure to meet you all today. Huge thanks to the anime uproar lads, Animac and Gozen, for letting me talk about this series on the channel. It's one of my favorites, so I honestly jumped at the chance. 
So, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see me cover other series like this on the channel, make sure to let the guys know by smashing that like button. If you haven't already, make this the video you subscribe and hit the notification bell to turn on all notifications or you will miss future Anime Uproar videos. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Anime Uproar or at 414 Anime underscore. And I want to give a big thank you to all our Anime Uproar Patreons for making videos like this one possible. A special thank you to Alpha Sigma, the absolute mad lad and a disciple of Lord Twigo himself. And of course, all of our the one tier Patreons, the ones who stand above all other clans. Ingrata, Patei Hefam, Aljazal, Dr. Cortman, The Toasted Chi, The Spike 8227, Emperor Otaku, Spidey Life to Nell, Tungsten Tarkus, Baked Buddhist, Cody Heber, and Monkey D. Quilly. And of course, I want to thank our pro hero Patreons, including the one and only Gilgamesh, the red haired Raven, Angel Cruz, Anatoly Kazitsky, Very Gucci, Alicia Akta, Bonnie Parks, Hino Kami and Water, Joanne Garcia, Ted Not Ted, Fatboy Games, Curry McGowan, Metal Mama, Deadly Saint, and Soul Rise Slice and Dice. If you enjoy our videos and feel they are adding some value to your life, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Even a dollar gives you access to our exclusive Patreon Discord and will get your name featured in our videos alongside these fantastic people. Thanks again for watching. We can't wait to see you in the next one. Till next time. Peace!